Shell friends, Beth with Thimblehooks, and back today I'm going to show you one of my favorite booty designs that I've created. This one is what I call a slouchy boot or my smoosh boot. You can call it a smoosh boot, and it's kind of fun to say. But there he is, so cute, so cute. And it's all squishy and slouchy and just adorable. There's that one in, in the really bright colors. And then there's one that's in the little pastels. So cute. So here we go. Like I said before, every time you want to do one of my my booty patterns, start out with two soles, which are in a previous video. You can see right here on the bottom of this one, I used this guy right here. And then right here you can see the pink. There's a pink stripe right here. That's this one. <clears throat> and then we're going to start with the orange. So this is, let me see which one you are. The black with the speckles is awesome. I think it's called Neon Fleck. Yep, Neon Fleck from Red Heart Super Saver. I just love this. This just is so much fun. It has just enough splashes of the highlighter green and yellow and orange and pink. But it's just a fun, 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 fun yarn. This is Simply Soft, Karen Simply Soft, uh, it's Fuchsia, I think, and this one is Karen Simply Soft Mango, the oranges. So we're going to start with these two. Got two booty soles. And turn them over, you can see this is the wrong side. The wrong side for both of them. Sandwich them together like this. Very nice. So we have your two baby booties. You will also need or two baby booty soles. You also need a four millimeter hook and a three millimeter hook. At least one stitch marker. I always use one. Stitch markers just save lots of time, I think. There's nothing wrong with using a stitch marker. And some way to count your rows. Whether you have a piece of paper, scratch paper and a pencil, or a clicker like mine, it doesn't matter. Just have one handy. That would be the best. So let's get started. So we have these sandwiched together. The little the tails are inside, so you won't even have to worry about weaving those in. So anytime you can get rid of tails without having to weave them in is great. All right. So I'm gonna make another one. Looks like this guy. So black is on the bottom, pink on the top, and I'm gonna use the mango. And we are going to leave him right there. I'm going to slip stitch. I'm going to go through this booty and a booty sole and through that booty sole. I'm going to go through both. This one takes a little bit of time, but it is a very important part. All we're going to do is slip stitches all the way through. Now you can see that I don't have any orange, any of the mango showing right there. It's just slip stitches. It's not going over the booty soles. It's just going on the top. So we're going to do slip stitches all the way around and there end up being 44. Let's go through here one more time. Oops, it's a little bit harder to work with the black when you're working with black. Alright, so there we go. And a slip stitch, go through that one, and go through the black. And slip stitch. Go through the pink, go through the black, and slip stitch. Pink and black, and slip stitch with the orange. Through the pink, through the black, slip stitch with the mango. Keep these little guys tucked in right here. And you just want to make sure that you go very carefully through the whole stitch of the pink and the whole stitch of the neon fleck black. So you're not splitting any stitches for this first row. Because then you're going to get this beautiful little edging right here on the very bottom in the mango. So I'm going to continue all the way around, keep these tucked inside, and I'll meet you back over here.
32, 43, and your very last stitch, 44, is going to go into the same place you just started. So there's 44. I already had this little tiny piece. Normally you would cut off right now and pull that through. And then we'll turn right here where your original tail starts. Go through that stitch, go through the black and the pink, and pull this one down just to get him out of the way. But not too tight because you don't want to lose this stitch. This stitch is amazingly important. So there we go. See how this works? We've got the black right here, the pink right here, and a little edging of the mango on the bottom. So we're at a, got a good start. Now we're going to continue with this part of the booty. I've got my, again, mango. Came around Simply Soft Mango. I'm going to change out my four. Four, three. Little tiny one. I know threes are kind of hard to find sometimes. Um, you can use a three and a half if that's better for you, or you can continue with a four, which is going to make the booty a little bit bigger. So we're going to start. right at the heel. See this is the toe because it's bigger and this is the heel. This is where we started so we're going to start back here again. And This part is a little particular as well just so you don't split any of those. You don't want to split any of the mango or any of the fuchsia stitches. Just we're going to go right underneath right underneath the mango stitch. I'm going to pull him through in a slip stitch and in that very same stitch oops, I don't want to split that stitch that very same stitch is a single crochet and then we're going to mark that very first stitch so he doesn't get lost along the way we don't get him mistake, mistaken with the chain. There we go. We're going to do that exact same thing. Go under, under the mango stitch, but not through the pink. Just want to make sure you don't s split any stitches and a single crochet. Under the mango, in between the mango and the pink, see, in between mango and pink, through single crochet. We're going to do that all the way around for every one of these mango stitches until we get back to our stitch marker. So I'll meet you back at the stitch marker in a minute. And these first stitches are so particular that they do take a little bit longer. But once we get this first round done, the rest of it goes pretty smooth sailing. You don't have to worry about trying to get underneath these stitches and sometimes they get kind of tight. That's why I'm using my little hook. So we want nice tight stitches. So Tootsies stay warm. And here's our last four stitches under the sky right here. There's number 41. See these are tricky. 42. number 44. There's my last stitch in round. I consider that round. 
Oopsie, I got a knot. Okay. There we go. We have 44 stitches all the way around. See, it's just starting to build up a little bit. Just a little bit. All right, so round one was all the slip stitches, these guys, and this is round two. We have our 44 stitches in round two. That tail on the inside. So now that we have our 44 on round one, we go into this marked stitch and do a slip stitch and a chain one so that we're up one stitch higher for the next round. So there, round one is done. And we'll take care of that guy in a little while. All right. Now this gets really easy for a smidge here. Um, rounds two, three, four, and five are all single crochet all the way around. So in that same stitch that we just did the slip stitch, that same stitch gets a single crochet. And we're going to mark that stitch again because it makes life a lot easier. All right. This round will go way faster. Actually, the next four will go way faster than this one did just because we're being so particular about not splitting any of those stitches with the pink and the mango. So we're going to single crochet 44 around and meet you back at the stitch marker. So we already have one, so this would be the one that's marked is our first stitch, so then we're going to go in here and this is two. And three. Two. You can see it's a little tricky just because Karen Simply Soft calls for a five millimeter hook and I'm using a three. It makes nice tight stitches so that you don't have big gaps in your stitches with the booties. We want to keep those little toes warm. But you see how much faster I'm going now that I'm not trying to go underneath that slip stitch. So I will meet you back at this stitch marker in a couple of minutes. And that was number six. All right, I'll meet ya. 44. I always want to make sure that you have 44. So let's just count really quick. Perfect. And once you get to 44, we are going to slip stitch into our mark stitch. Just a slip stitch. And a chain one so that we're ready for the next round. And I forgot to mark that. So our slip stitch round was one. Under the slip stitches with mango is two, and that was round three. See, it's working up a little bit. Perfect. All right, now rounds four and five are exactly the same as round three. So we're going to go around here, round four, for 44 stitches. Slip stitch into the mark stitch and round five. So we're going to do two more rounds of 44 single crochets. We're going to go. We already did our chain one, so we're going to single crochet into that very, very, very first stitch and mark that stitch so we always know where it is. Saves time, saves everything. All right, two more times around. I'll meet you there in a minute. That was two, no, that was one, this is two. Here we go. There's 41, 42, 43, and 44. And that is round four. Click. Just 
just building this up a little bit. Just right here, building this up a little bit. So then at the end of every round, we did our 44 stitches. Now we're going to slip stitch into this mark stitch. Just a slip stitch. And a chain one so we're ready for round five. I'm going to take out this. We're going to need him in just a second. Single crochet into that very first stitch that we just slip stitched into as we did before. So there's round five. So the beginning of round five. There's stitch number one. 44 around. And then we get to start to reduce. So again, rounds two, three, four, and five are all a round of 44 single crochets. I'm on round five right now. So I'll meet you back at the stitch marker. And 44. There you go, you can see, just right in here, just looks like a little boat right now. Now we're going to do the shaping right here, there will be three rows of reducing on the toe. Obviously this is the toe because it's bigger, so we're going to start to reduce. which is much much easier than it seems. So again, in this stitch that's marked, a slip stitch and a chain one. Now here's the sneaky part. This part's a little bit tricky. Not too tricky. It's just very important. You want to make sure that you're reducing actually goes right here and isn't off to the side here or off to the side here. So we're going to find the approximate center of the front. So let's we'll take this guy right here, this little stitch. We'll call him the middle of the front. We're going to count back towards my stitch marker. 22. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Wow, that worked out perfectly. I'm actually in the right stitch. Sometimes, depending on where you start, in the very first on row, uh, the very first stitch in row one, you could be off to the side a little bit. But this is the stitch that I want to start with because it's 22 away from the front. Then our reduces will actually be on the toe and not off to the side. So that worked out very nicely. That happens most of the time, but it does depend on where you begin the very first round. All right, so I'm going to take out the stitch marker. And we're ready to go in that very same stitch because this is the start stitch we needed to start with in order to stay centered. We're going to do a single crochet. Mark that stitch because we're going to need them in a little while. And another crochet, single crochet. So there's two single crochets. These next two are going to be single crochet two together. So we're going to do go in, pull through, yarn go through, pull through, and now you have three loops, three loops on your hook. Come through all three. Now those two stitches have become one. So that was easy. The next eight are single crochet. Okay, now we're going to reduce for the toe. So it's a double crochet two together ten times. So over these next twenty stitches, we're only going to end up with ten stitches. So how we do this, double crochet two together is a yarn over, go through, go through, yarn over, or go through two, yarn over, Pull up, go through two, and now you have three loops on your hook. Go through all three of them. Let's do that one more time. 
yarn over through, pull through two, yarn over, go through the next stitch, pull through two, and three loops on your hook, pull them all together. So those two stitches now became one. We're going to do that eight more times. We need ten double crochet two togethers. So I'll meet you right about here in just a moment. All right, there's my ten. See, it's starting to reduce in a little bit. Starting to make a little rounded toe. It's the first one. First round of reducing. We'll reduce again with the next round, but we have to finish this one first. So now the next eight are single crochets just like they were here on this side previous to the double crochet two togethers. Now we're going to do after the double crochet two togethers eight single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we'll do single crochet two together in the next two stitches so they become one. Pull through and through the next stitch. And we'll pull through, three loops on your hook, go through all three. And in the last two stitches, each one gets a single crochet. There, now you can see that it's starting to pull in a little bit. Right in here. Right in there. It's starting to make an arc. Alright, so let's do round two of our reducing. That was technically round six. So now we're going to do round seven, which is a slip stitch and a chain one in that marked stitch, just like we have been all the other times, and take him out. Now round seven is going to start with eight single crochets. So in that very same stitch that we just slip stitched into, he gets a single crochet, and we're going to mark this stitch. It just makes everything easier. And we're going to do eight single crochets. This is number one, so here's number two. And there's three. After those eight, the next two are half double crochets, so it's a yarn over, pull through, pull through all three. There's half double crochet number one, and half double crochet number two. Now since we already reduced some, we have to reduce again, but we don't need to do ten. We're only going to do six this time. So here's round over. Pull through two, two loops on your hook. Pull through two, three loops on your hook. Go through all three. There's one. We need six of those total. Here's the second one. And there's number three. And there's number four. And there's number five. Whoopsie. There we go. There's number five. And double crochet two together. Number six. Put that out just a little bit. And you can see it pulled it in even further. Like that. Pulled it in even further. So we're going to finish round seven. Just like previous before the reducing was two half double crochets. So we'll do the same on this side. Half double crochet. Half double crochet. And then to finish 
round seven. The next eight stitches each get one single crochet. So there's one single crochet, and there's two. Whoopsie. See, I split my stitch, that's no good. There's two. There's the second round of reducing. We only have three, so we're almost there. See how close that looks. See, it's starting to look like a toe instead of like a little boat. And so we have one more round of reducing. So like we did before, I'm going to slip stitch into our mark stitch and chain one so we're ready for the next round, which is our last round of reducing, which is also round eight. So we're going to start in this very same stitch that we just slip stitched into. It was a single crochet. And now we can mark him. It's easy to find that last, that first stitch again. All right, so in this round we need 11 single crochets. So there's the first one. We need 10 more. So here's two. Three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And we're going to reduce one more time with two double crochet two togethers. Only need two on this round. So there's one. Go through two and two. Through two. Three loops on the hook. Go off all the way through. There's the first one. And here's the second one. Alright, now that we did that, we need 11 single crochets down here to get back to the stitch marker. Because everything is symmetrical. And there's one. And 11. There's number 11. So we've got our stitches. That actually ends up being we've done so much reducing that we have 24 stitches now. But there's our gorgeous little toe. Look at the cute little shoe. That's perfect. This looks awesome. All right. All right, now we're on going on to the booty top. That was all of this part down here. Now we're going to start working this way. I'm going to start working this way. I'm going to take this off right now. We are going to start working up now. Up this way. Because we're done with our toe. Hooray! Making some progress. It's looking like a boot already. This is great. Okay, like we always do. There's a slip stitch and a chain one. Oh, it's stuck. Here we go. Take that out. Now we're going to make this just a little bit bigger. 24 isn't quite enough to have the nice smoosh going on up here. We need it to be a little bit bigger. Alright, so we did our slip stitch and chain one. For round nine, we actually want to chain two. Take out the slip stitch, or take out my stitch marker, and we are going to double crochet into that very same stitch and mark it. I call that one. I do not like using that as my first stitch. So really this is my first stitch. That's just a way for me to get there is with my, my chain two. I do not like to use chains as a double crochet. If I can avoid it, I don't like doing that. So in this very first stitch we're going to put two double crochets. So that we already have the first one is marked and there's the second one.
and then this in this next stitch we want to do the same thing. There's one double crochet and two double crochets. In the next four, one, two, three, four, it's just a double crochet. One each. There's one, two, three, and four. In the next three stitches, they get two double crochets each. So this is stitch one, you get one double crochet, two double crochet. Next stitch is the same, one double crochet, two double crochets, and the same in stitch number three, one double crochet, and two. Just making this a little bit bigger. Now along the toe here, the next six stitches get one double crochet each. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. In the next three stitches they get to they get two. So there's two double crochets in each of these next stitches. These next three, so there's one, there's two. And in the third stitch, the same, two double crochet, one and two. And the next four, just a double crochet in each one. One, oops, two, three, and four. And in the last two, just the same way we started, two double crochets in each one of these stitches. So there's one and two. And in the very last stitch, double crochet one and double crochet number two. I made it just a little bit bigger. So we can start getting squishy. Very cute. Very cute. We're getting there. Alright, so we just finished round nine. We're going to slip stitch in this one mark stitch. That's why those markers are so important. We're going to slip stitch. And we will chain two. So now we're ready for round ten. And now this whole round, everything is going to be in the outside loop only. The way that I'm crocheting right now would be the front loop only, but I always say outside loop only. Because some people might go in the other direction. When working in the round, I like to be very particular about inside or outside. So this one is outside loop only. And a double crochet. And now we have to put our stitch marker back. Okay, now we did the first one, but we want three total. So we have to do two more in the outside loop only. Double crochet in the outside loop only number two. And double crochet in the outside loop number three. And the next three are triple crochets in the outside loop. So we'll go around twice, outside loop only. Triple crochet one, 
triple crochet number two and triple crochet number three Now in this next, <clears throat> this next group of three is what I call quadruple crochet in the outside loop. I think some people might call it a double triple, but I call it a quadruple just so that you know it's bigger than a triple. But it's a quadruple crochet in the front loop only of the next three. So one, two, three times around. Outside loop only. One, two, or one, one, one. We're still in the same one. Sorry, that was one. Round three times. This is the second one. One, two, three. And this is the third one. One, two, or that's one, two, three. There we go. That's our three of our quadruples. We're going to go down a little bit so it's only a triple for the next three. Only a triple crochet instead of that bigger stitch. So three triple crochets in a row and the outside loop only. That part's very important to get the slow T effect. There is my triples. Now we're going to do in the next three is double crochet in the outside loop only. One, two, three. Right, now the next four, because we're right at the toe, it'd be symmetrical. These are going to be single crochet in the front loop only times four, not three. That's the only time that you're going to be off three on this row. So there's one single crochet, front loop only, there's two, there's three, and there's four. Now we're going to start back around again. Three double crochet in the front loop only. One, two, three, three triple crochet in the outside loop only. Here's one, two, and three. And then we're going to do three quadruples in the outside only. One, through two, yarn over through two, yarn over through two, and yarn over through two, and one more. Now we're back to triples. Three triples, please. In the outside loop only. One. Two. And three. And the last three stitches are double crochets in the outside loop only. There's double one, number one, and double crochet number two, and double crochet number three. See, it's starting to get a little poofy. It's going to help with the slow cheese. And I 
start making it nice and mochi. Alright, so that's the end of round 10. Now round 11, we're going to change colors. So we're going to slip stitch right here, finish off this round with a slip stitch with the orange or with a mango. And then change color. with the chain one. All right, we'll change color with the chain one. We're going to take out our stitch marker. Change color with the chain with the chain one. We'll take out our stitch marker, set him down for a second. Now this whole round Round 11 is all half double crochets on the inside loop only. So right here, not through the whole thing and not through the front, but through the back, right here is a yarn over, pull up, three loops on your hook, pull through all three. And then we're going to mark that stitch. And it's going to be hard to see with the black, but the flex do help a little bit just wanted to make another one that looks just like this guy. Alright, so again, yarn over, back loop only, and pull through all three. Yarn over, back loop only, pull through all three. Yarn over, back loop only, pull through all three. Alright, so I will meet you at the other side, back at the stitch marker again. Go a half double crochet in the back, in the inside loop only, all the way around for 34 stitches total. And I'll meet you there in a moment. Here's the last few stitches. and 34. Those are on the inside loops only. We did a whole round, whole round of half double crochet. I'm going to take this and tuck him inside so he doesn't get in anyone's way. Don't want to confuse anyone with that orange, the mango hanging up there. All right, so that was one round of half double crochet inside loop only or the back loop only but this is inside loop only in case you're working in the other direction people do that sometimes I have found all right so that was round 11 that one was easy now we got round 12 I'm gonna slip stitch into that marked stitch like we have been the whole time chain two and in that same stitch, in that same very same stitch, I'm going to do again on the outside loop only. This will be a double crochet. Now they're a little bit tricky to see in the dark, but it's the same thing that we did before. just wanted to make it look like this so you could see what was going on and the flex will help. All right, so that was the first one now in the front loop only front loop or the outside loop only is a total of six so that was the first one do five more so this is number two and number three and number four, number five, and number six. So there were six double crochets in the front loop only. The next three are single crochets in the front loop only. So there's one, 
just a single crochet, two in the front loop only, outside loop only, and three. In the next three we're going to do a double crochet, outside loop only, again, three of them. Double crochet again, there's a one, outside loop only, two, and three, and this next two, not three, but in two, we want to do a triple crochet in the outside only. We need these two, so there's one triple crochet, round around twice, and two triple crochet in the outside loop only. And then we're at the front again, so the next six are going to be my quadruple crochets in the outside loop only. So that's one, two, three times around. And we need that in six stitches, outside loop only. So there's one, this is number two. This is number three. One, two, three. This is number four in the outside loop only. One, two, three. And this is number five in the outside loop only. Last one, number six, and my outside loop only. And number six, there it goes, right at the front of the toe. And then now we're working backwards again, down the other side. So I want to triple crochet in the next two, in the front loops only, or the outside loops only. There's one. And there's my second triple in the outside loop only. The next three is double crochet in the outside only. So there's one, two, and three. Next three is single crochet in the outside loop only. So just a single crochet. One, outside loop only, and two, and three. And then in the last six stitches, it's double crochets in the outside loop only. There's one. And number six. So there's the middle part. It's just awesome. All right, that was the end of round 12. We're going to slip stitch into our marked stitch like we have been. Just do the slip stitch real quick. And now we're going to change to pink. And we're going to change colors. So we did our slip stitch. Now we're going to chain one. Chain one with the pink. We'll tuck that one in. Take out our stitch marker, but we're going to need them back in a minute. Now this row is this, this round is round 13 is the same as round 11, which is half double crochets on the inside loop only all the way around. So we'll just do that right now. 
All right, in the same stitch right here, we're going to go half double crochet in the back loop only. Right there. Half double crochet in the back loop only. That one was tricky because it was dark. That's why black yarn is crazy sometimes. We want to mark that stitch. We're going to need him in a minute, so we'll just mark that. All right, half double crochets all the way around, 34 stitches total. So I'll meet you back at the stitch marker in just a minute. The back loop only, or the inside loop only. Half double crochets in the inside loop only. 32, 33, and 34. Okay, that was... There we go, our 34 stitches. Okay, that was the end of row, row 13. Now we're going to go on to row 14, which is a repeat of row 10. So we're going to, we have to slip stitch into our marked stitch as we do. It's this guy right here. Oh, come on. A slip stitch and chain two. There we go. Pull these a little tighter. All right, now we're going to start on round 14, which is a repeat of round 10. So in that very same stitch right there, double crochet in the outside loop only. And mark our stitch. We are almost done, believe it or not. This is going to be great. Alright, so we want that in three stitches. So there's our first one, outside loop only, double crochet. There's the second one. And there's number three. And the next three is triple crochets on the outside loop only. There's one, two, and three. And the next three are quadruples. One, two, three times around. And the next three stitches is quadruples. So there's quadruple in the outside loop, only number one. Quadruple in the outside loop only, number two. And cro trip quadruple crochet in the outside loop, on loop only, number three. Now go back down to a triple in the next three. So triple crochet in the front loop only times three. There's number two and there's number three. Alright, now in the now the next one, the next three, one, two, three, is going to be triple crochet, or I'm sorry, double crochet in the front loop only times three. One, front in the front loop only the next four are single crochets One, two, three and four and we're back to the doubles the next three front loop only Now we're on to triples for the next three. One, two, 
two, three, And we'll do three more quadruples. One, two, three times around for the quadruples in the next three. Outside loop only. Outside loop only, always the outside loop only. This whole round is outside loop only. We'll go back to triples, two times around. The next three are triples. Outside loop only, there's one. And there's two. And there's three. And the last three stitches in this round are double crochet in the outside loop only. There's one, there's two, and there's number three. All right, so that is the end of round 14, which was a repeat of round 10. And now we're going to slip stitch into our mark stitch and chain one and we are going to repeat round 11, which was a half double crochet in the back loop only all the way around. So there was a half double crochet in the inside, inside loop only that was number one. Here's number two. I'll meet you back at the stitch marker in just a second. There we go. All right, there's the last of round 15. Half, loop, half double crochets on the inside loop only, all the way around. All right, there's round 15, so we're almost done. We only have two more rounds, and these ones are really easy. All right, so we're going to slip stitch in, our, in this stitch like we have been the entire time. Do a slip stitch and a chain one. And we're going to reduce a little bit, because this is probably a little bit too big. You fall right off of a tiny foot. So we have to reduce a little bit right in here. But not much. So in our very first stitch we're going to do a single crochet and we'll mark this stitch. So in the first five it will be single crochets. There's the first one, so there's number two, single crochet, and in a whole stitch. There's number three, number four, and number five. We are done with the inside outside loops. So now we'll do it just a normal old through the whole stitch. Now we're going to do a single crochet two together times five. So we'll go in, yarn over, and in again. Three loops on the hook. There's number one. There's number two. There's number three. There's number four. And there's number five. And the next four are just a single crochet. One, two, three, and four. Single crochet, single crochet two together five times again. So we're going to go in, over, and in. Three loops on the hook. There's number one, two, three, four, and here's number five. 
three loops on the hook. There we go. And in these last five is just a normal single crochet. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. go it's all squishy we're almost done to even this last row out a little bit when we did those reducings just so it just looks looks nice none of the stitches are a little bit bigger than the other we just want to do whoopsie all right this is our last round it's round 17 so this time we're going to be crazy and we're actually going to single crochet into our marked stitch instead of the slip stitch. We don't want to slip stitch this time. We want to finish off this edge really nice. So we're going to mark him so we know where we're going. We're going to go all the way around with single crochets just like normal and there should be 24 after reducing the last time. I'll meet you back at, the, at my stitch marker. This is our last round. How exciting! 23 and 24. That was our last round. That is so fun. All right, there's the last round that we need to do there. I'm going to slip stitch into our marked, our marked stitch. Now you just have to fasten off and weave in all your ends. These ones are easy. You can just go in through here, through the bottom, and pull them in. Don't have to weave those in. That is so, so cool. Anytime I don't have to thread a needle, just go through the hole on the bottom. If I don't have to thread the needle, it makes me so happy. Anytime you can hide a stitch, hide it like this is great. You can cut it off if you want. Actually, I will. I'll just cut them off. So now we're never going to see that again. That's perfect. Never going to see that again. They're all gone. This is great. I'll tuck that inside. Now I do want to show you something, show you something very interesting. Something very interesting that may help you decide how you want to start at the very, very beginning. This slouchy boot that I just made and this slouchy boot that I made are the exact same pattern, exact same stitches. You can see they look a little different. These are poofing out and those are going in. These are poofing out. These are poofing out. These are poofing in. These are poofing in. But exactly the same. And the reason for that is when I started the very, very first, very first stitch in round uh, two. After the slip stitches, I went, I've been stitching in this direction. have been stitching this way. If, however, you start here and stitch this way, stitch around this way, you end up with this look. So it really just depends on the way you want these to look because these stitches will poof no matter what, but they just poof in a different way. Okay, so they both poof, but they just poof in a different way. Let's set them both up. Here they look exactly the same, except for these are just a little bit poofy on the out, and these are poofy on the in. So they're still slouchy, but the stitches just look a little bit different. So whichever way you go, 
You just want to make another one looks just like it. The difference would be when we start our very first stitches, I went this way around the toe. This way is this look with them poofing out. This way is the poof in. So this is the right side and this is technically the wrong side. So just informational if you want them to look a little bit different. You're wondering why they look different? It's because of exactly that. They're just the directions that I was going with the stitches. That's why I say inside loop and outside loop because people go different directions. So that was that little piece of information. Um, we are done. All you do is make another one looks just like it. I'll make this guy later in a different video for you. He's just a little accessory. Goes over the top right here. So cute. Alright. Well, there is my slouchy or smooshy baby boot. This is one of my favorite patterns that I've ever made. I just love it. And this is my favorite my favorite color combination. So I'm Beth with Thimble Hooks. Thanks for stopping by. Please subscribe to my channel and thank you for supporting my small business. I appreciate it and I hope to see you very soon. Bye bye. Take off my glasses now. Hooray!